Is it possible to build a bulb stabilized wind bridge oscillator from an LM386 audio amplifier IC? It looks like it is. In this video, I'll tell you what I learned and how it works for me. I was building a simple audio amplifier, so I went online to look for LM386 datasheets, and I found this one from HG Semi. To my surprise, the datasheet showed a schematic for a low distortion power wind bridge oscillator, and it's bulb stabilized. And those are fun, so I decided I had to try it. Now, I don't have an LM386 uh, from HG Semi, at least I don't think I do. The one I have is from a Chinese kit from Amazon, and it's marked as shown in the slide. I don't have a datasheet for it, but I decided to try to build the circuit from the HD Semi datasheet. And here is that schematic. The changes and choices that I made are shown in blue. One thing that's critical is you do have to have a, at least a decoupling cap for the power supply. Um, a single 10 microfarad cap worked for me, but in the test that I'm going to show, I have two. I have a 100 microfarad cap and also a 0.1 microfarad cap. In addition, the bulb that the schematic recommended is no longer available, at least according to Mouser. So I'm using a different bulb. It's a 5 volt, 21 milliamps, and it's Mouser part number 560-7112. Although I found that other bulbs worked pretty well with this circuit. It doesn't seem to be too sensitive to it. As I've said before, if you want to play with bulb stabilized oscillators, buy bulbs now. They're getting rarer and rarer. This wean bridge is a little unusual in that the two resistors, R1 and R2, don't have the same value. That means we have to use a more general formula for the frequency of oscillation, and the, that formula is shown on the slide. And with the values used, that implies we should get a frequency of about 1070 hertz, and you'll see that we do. It also means that the relationship between the feedback amplitude and the output amplitude won't be the usual one-third. It'll be more like one-twelfth. And maybe that's the reason why the 10 microfarad capacitor is fitted between pins 1 and 8. This increases the gain of the LM386 to its maximum of 200. Here's the circuit as I built it on a breadboard. I guess there's not too much to say about it. Um, one thing is I didn't try very hard to match components. So like the two capacitors maybe aren't exactly the same value. And also you can see I'm running at 12 volts uh, for the power supply. Another interesting thing is that this circuit is only using a single power supply. The output is capacitively coupled, so it oscillates around zero still. Here's the circuit running. I've made a number of videos on Veen bridge oscillators, and I'll put some links below. But as usual, you can control the amplitude of the output signal by turning the trim pot. So I'll do that. So I'll turn it up, and at some point we'll, we'll see that it starts to clip, in fact, right about now. So that's beyond the maximum signal level output that you'd want to use. So let me turn it back down so that it's well, well below clipping. And uh, the cursors there show that we're about 9.75 uh, volts peak to peak. And at this at this level, the the oscillator is very stable. I can tap on the bulb and it and it recovers just immediately. And uh, so that's pretty good. And let me ha let's have a quick look at the FFT output. So you can see we have, oh, roughly 49 dB between the fundamental harmonic and the, and the next largest. That's pretty mediocre. And go back to the, to the main display here. And let's turn the amplitude down quite a bit. How about that? So, um, <clears throat> Zoom back up a little bit, and now it's a little bit less stable, but still still quite good. And go back to the FFT. And it looks like the quality of the signal is somewhat improved. Back to the main display, and let's try going to a very low signal level. So back to this trim pot here which is a little bit hard to get a screwdriver into. It's a 10 turn trim pot, might have gone too far there. Pull it up again. And uh, so now the signal level is quite a bit lower. 
and it doesn't recover as quickly. And in fact, I've noticed that if I get it low enough, I can get some instability in the output amplitude like I've seen in other circuits. But above, oh, you know, 0.5 volts RMS, it seems quite good. So, well, let's see, come out again, come out so we can see that it's still the sine wave, go back in again, and look at the FFT. And let's see. There we go. So that looks pretty good. So I think this, this circuit is doing a pretty good job. It's um, perhaps a winner, something to try. The next thing I'll do is to try changing the resistor and the capacitor values and get a different frequency. Ah, notice that the frequency that we have is about 1.1 nine kilohertz and that's pretty close to what theory predicted especially given that i didn't choose the components very carefully so all in all i think the circuit's looking looking pretty good and we're back and now the the uh resistors are 33k and 3.3k and the capacitors are both 3.3 nanofarads and theory would say that this should give us about 4.6 kilohertz and we can see that we're getting about 4.4 so I guess within, within tolerance, within the margin of error. And the potentiometer is set for a fairly low signal amplitude. And I don't think it's quite as stable as it was before. Um, kind of jumping around, a little bit of that might be oscilloscope noise. Uh, let me tap the bulb and we'll see it recover. And um, let's see, let's do this. Tap the bulb again and uh, see it recover. And we'll see, we'll turn off the measurement and go back, whoops, and go back to the FFT. And that looks pretty good. So now back to the scope, wrong knob. And now let's, uh, let's turn the amplitude up and see if the stability comes back. So we'll turn the measurement back on for a second, up to 2 point something, 2.2-ish 2 .2 RMS, and it looks a lot more stable at the high level, just, just like at the lower frequency. It looks very good. And Go back to the FFT. And once again, the, well, that's still pretty good quality, actually. Not bad. So um, even at the higher frequency, this circuit looks like it's working pretty well. Um, like I said, I've made a number of videos on, on Veenbridge oscillators. I'll, I'll put some links below, but I, I think I'll end this video here. I just wanted to try this circuit that I found on the, on the data sheet of an LM386, and, and I think it works pretty well. In fact, it, especially at these higher frequencies, it's, it's working better than in any other circuit that I've tried. So it might be worthwhile. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.